restitution of 540, pled the theft by theft charge out, restitution $5,600. Concurrent five-year probation. Did the restitution and did the probation. And I went forth and sent no more. So you pretty much got out of the telemark. Oh, no. Or we the, got that. The, That's the, going back over 20 years ago. No, 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 no. If, if you want to work on Saturdays and you're, uh, whether you're selling advertising or whether you're begging, who are you going to call on a Saturday morning? Who's going to be there? A beauty shop. I mean, the owner. The owner. Right. Oh, yeah. A beauty shop. Yeah. So you get your uh, Dun & Bradstreet Michael calls them out. And by zip code, it's got SIC, Standard Industrial Classification. Uh -huh. It's got, you know, it's a four-digit four code, and you look under beauty shops. Right. And, and in any zip code you want to work, that's called the Dun & Bradstreet Microcosm. And it's got beauty shops. Right. And if you want to work on Saturday and make some extra money, who are you going to call on Saturday? You're going to call Jones Manufacturing and try to get the boss on Saturday morning? No, 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 no. I mean, the argument against that is that the owner is going to be there, but they're going to be so busy that they won't talk to you. Well, that's your average person, not me. <laughs> yeah. I get through to the person that, uh, after the phone. They think I know the lady or, or guy. I get them on the phone. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. I don't ask for too much. And, hey, just to get me off the phone, you know, hey, you know, give me $10, give me $20, give me $25, can't do $25. You've got to remember back 20 years ago, this stuff was epidemic. The people would lock, literally, I've had people, plenty of times, they keep a log of it. They would log over 250 calls a year of the nature I was giving them. Okay, they would set a budget up. Your typical small business owner would once right off for them. Right? Yeah, yeah, they'd set up. I'm going to give away two thousand dollars this year, three thousand, and they'd give it away first come first serve. And when the budget was gone, you couldn't get it if right. it wasn't. Yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't <laughs> because they'd tell you why. I've had two hundred people call me, and I've given away three thousand dollars, about ten bucks a piece. You know, mm -hmm. okay, and you couldn't get it. If you did, you did, and that's you know that's the way it was. And so that's where that beauty shop shop comes from. So they they're working on Saturday, and that's primarily that's their day. That's when the owner is going to be there. That's the busiest time of the week on any beauty shop. It's right. Saturday morning. Do they tend to give up good money as far yes, as all yes. women in there? And you know, what? women tend to give the money up a little bit easier sometimes. No, not play on the hard string. Not at all. Not, not at all. all. Not at all. I'm going to tell you something. And you take it from me. Really? No. You you know what you're being fooled by? You're all being fooled. You're being fooled by a woman's instinct, not her free will. Her instinct is that of nurturing. Mm -hmm. That's because she's instinctually, she raises the kids. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and you're being fooled by her nurturing instinct, and she has a soft spot for kids and small furry animals. But I'm going to tell you something. You take it to the bank, pal, and you take it from a guy that begged professionally for over 20 years. The, the sex that is the most avaricious, accumulative, greedy and heartless is women. Really? Is women. I've had more women take the check right out of their husband's hand. Call up Joe Stop and Go out in Rex, Georgia, you know. Hey, you know, hey Joe, yeah, twenty five bucks go out there to pick it up. Be right the thing this fucking battle axe wife I'm like, what you doing there? <laughs> and you're not getting that. And just take the thing. Don't listen. That's, that's, that's why we're in the condition we're in. Is be, don't ever forget this. You don't be fooled by a woman's nurturing instinct. Look at their free will personalities and you're going to find women are the most hateful, avaricious, accumulative, greedy, and heartless. My God, when the American Indians, the, the Woodland Indians, and the Iroquois and so forth in the Northeast U.S., They'd bring a captive back to, to torture. You know, it was like a, they were inflicting you know, one captive. There's a sociological, a cultural reason for it I could explain to you, but just let me say. When they'd bring a captive back to torture and to death, you know who did the torture? No one. Yeah, yeah, they come out with their hot coals and their sharp sticks, okay? You know who the ones that are on? You send them to war. You may think, oh, my son. Yeah, their, my son had to go to war. Well, I'll tell you, I've, I've seen it on video more than more than one World War II that been over there fighting. He'd been fighting so much that he's amongst the earliest release, come back home and have women on the street saying, 
you ought to be over there fighting and everything. Women are the most, women are what got us in this, this situation we're in, man. Yeah, I mean, the reason why is what do women want? The two things. They want their home and kids and they want things, okay? Hey, do you think pottery was just uh, invented 7,000 years ago? They always knew that clay would harden. The thing is when they were hunters and men were men and men were in control and, and, and they moved around and they were free and not enslaved by the states because when they settled down the states were able to end it. They couldn't have things. You can't have pottery. You can't carry pottery around. It's too fucking heavy. It breaks. Okay? So they had to use bowling bags and so forth. And women wanted their things. They wanted their pottery. They wanted their homes. They wanted to settle down. So what happened? At the end of the last ice age, the Pleistocene megafauna, the great big ass animal, went extinct. Women used that to get us get men to start planting seeds and grubbing in the earth like animals. Okay. And once they got them settled down on the farm, then what happened is, you know, ecological disaster, they destroyed, you know, they, men have never lived, in, agriculture people have never lived in harmony with nature. What they had to do was move out of the Anatolian Plateau in Turkey and northern Iraq and Iran, and they had to move down into the river valleys of Mesopotamia, the Tigris and the Euphrates, ditto with the Nile. Once they moved down into those valleys, desert there, water there, irrigation, then the state was able to assume control by getting them in a hydraulic trap of these giant irrigation projects, which they did, dams, canals, everything. And once the state got control of the water, they had control of the people. And after that, humanity descended into degradation, slavery, uh, pauperism, that 99% of all humans, the, the history of, 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 of civilization is the history of 1% of the people, the elites. We don't even know what the dredges wore back in many times. You know, nothing. They were just dredges. They were, uh, and, and they would intensify their production and, and try to get more and more. And the end result is no one could eat meat and they were just eating mush, you know, which most of the world still eats, you know, rice or, you know, whatever, maize, that kind of thing. And it's a, it's a story that's been repeated over and over. And what started it all? Women wanting to settle down and have things and have their kids. When they moved around, you see, they had to kill the girl babies. Female infanticide. The reason they had to kill the girl babies is you got ten men, ten women. Well, if you kill nine of the men and leave all the women, well, that one guy can keep them all pregnant. Doesn't do any good to kill the men. You can't control the population by killing men. Male babies. You can't. One guy can keep a hundred women pregnant. Doesn't do any good. You gotta kill the female babies. Okay. Infanticide was the dirty little dark secret of the old stone age. But we're still doing it in the modern times. I consider abortion uh, infanticide, although I'm not judging. I, uh, you know what I mean? There's a woman's right to choose. Mm -hmm. But hey, there's no joke about it. Listen, to, to abort an embryo that would otherwise come to term is killing a person. It, it is. It, it just is. And we're still killing, what, in the U.S., how many uh, millions a year? No. Uh, uh, that's infanticide, just another form of it, you see. And so women wanted to have their babies and they wanted to have their homes and things. And what has happened is that the homo sapiens women, there's some kind of mutation in the homo sapiens women because before, the humans before us, which is homo erectus, okay, they had a run of almost two million years. And their toolkit changed very little. The tools they made and so forth changed very little over that time. Can you imagine such an immense span of time? You know, Homo sapiens, the, the very first Homo sapiens skeleton that we had now found is 164,000 years old. And more typically, Homo sapiens skeletons are no older than 70, 80, 90,000 years old. And just in that short period of time, what's happened with them as opposed to Homo erectus? Homo erectus, by the way, and so did Homo sapiens, stood taller than modern men. We're stronger, we're in better health, and lived as long as human beings until the year 1900. In the year 1900, the average span of, uh, in the U.S. was 47 years old. And that's about what Homo erectus and home, early Homo sapiens lived to. They were in better health. They had not picked up these horrible diseases acquired from domestic animals such as smallpox, measles, influenza, and a host of others, those all came from domestic animals, mutations, like your bird flu now. 
Yeah, it, it, but you see that in the women of the day now, as far as the same type of traits that you... Son, I'm telling you, I'm an observer, I'm a philosopher, I'm a man of vast experience. You're an I've been a professional beggar for 20 years. And I'm going to tell you, who has the biggest heart? It's going to be men. Really? You're fooled by a woman's nurturing instincts and her softness, but a woman isn't soft. It's the difference in our personality. Uh, men tend to be more con confrontational and grab the whole thing, while women affect an air of softness and get it a bit at a time. Almost manipulative, you mean? Much more. So, and I always remember, they got the pussy. <laughs> we're fucked. We're totally fucked. <laughs> but hey, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Be a Republican. Have a party. Your world is kaput. Your world is over with, pal. It's gone. I mean, your children will never, never... You want your kids to grow up to be a lawyer? Be, forget about it. There is no future for your kids. There is none. The Muslims got us by the gasoline balls. Before, they had to come across oceans to get at us. And once they came across oceans, they had this huge country that even if they could get at us, they couldn't invade us and occupy it. Like I say, Russia soaked up invading armies twice. Napoleon with over half a million men. The Germans were three and well, no, the Germans were three and a half million men. Okay, these were huge armies. Napoleon in 1812 over half a million. Germans World War II three and a half million. Okay, soaked them up just the vastness of it. They couldn't get at us. Now they don't have to. Again, I'm going to tell you. I've told you before. I'm going to tell you again. We have this huge, vast, interconnected socioeconomic structure. You're you're embedded in a matrix in a world that isn't real, that has been constructed totally for you, and it's all interconnected. It's built on values which are virtual. Okay, but it's built upon the harsh reality of cheap gasoline. It's a house of cars and sun. Once that starts going, the cascading effects, the ripple effects of this are going to be unimaginable. But just to give you an idea of, of, of what ripple and the interconnectedness of everything, we have a bunch of people here with subprime mortgages that don't pay their mortgage. Okay. A bunch of African Americans and other low rent people that don't pay their mortgages. And what does it end up? Our four national banks so far have written off a hundred billion dollars and it's probably twice that much it's going to end up to keep from failing our biggest national banks Chase Manhattan and the other the big four have had to go and sell parts of themselves for billions and billions 20 to overseas to stay solvent because a bunch of people didn't pay their mortgage yeah. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. I'm now sure. that's child's play. That's that's just enough. More coffee. I'm on the. I, I'm I know on you. The, I know you're trying to get out. Of no, here. I'm, I'm but, not trying but to get out. But but you see here. you see the inter interconnectedness of this. Now right. what's going to happen when that cheap? What's going to happen if with if gasoline? If nothing goes bad. I told you. I told you before. I I've, I've handled atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was in special weapons, and I've handled atomic bombs that damn big that weigh 79 wow. pounds. And What's going to, and that's assuming nothing like that happens. Right. That's assuming nobody gets uh, weaponized anthrax and shuts down our postal system. All it would take is a few anthrax letters to shut down our postal system. Everybody's forgotten that. Okay, but if nothing bad happens, what's going to happen if gasoline goes up a buck a year for 10 years, and in 10 years it's at $13 a gallon? Son, it's going to bring you down. It's going to bring you down. That's why they can bring the fucking death penalty on me, okay? Go ahead, try me. Bring it on, okay? Because it's going to take me three or four years to come to trial. It's going to, even at the federal level, they'll, they'll be able to knock a little time off. It's going to take an average of about 12 years to, to impose it, maybe even longer, really. And, and, and by then, you know, now we're talking 17 years. This society... Well, our case is, our case is adjudicated. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about the future. Right. That's my feelings towards them. I, I'm giving you a lot of the stuff man. that... I wanted to say for the profilers because right. they uh, oh, they're going to be they're going to be interested to talk to you anyway. Yeah, but, but you know something, you, you you know well you were a little rough on me the first night, but I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You might have had a live girl on your hands for all you knew, uh, but you treated me fairly. You've been a man of your word. Uh, you're cops, of course. I understand that, and uh, we're never going to be friends. But you've been a man of your word, and in the end, you lived up to your deal. And uh, in the end, you treated me professionally, 
And uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm giving you something. I'm giving you cooperation. Right. I promised you cooperation that night. I gave it to you. The only question I didn't answer was on the advice of my attorney, and I would have answered that. That's right. what she was doing from the beginning. Right. Yeah, she was. Right. She was because I just told you, once you've done it, you're either going to kill her or get caught. There's, there's no other solution. It's not that, you know. 